Okay, you should be here in about five minutes. Are you recording? You. S the gag is there's nobody else here. Magic. That's me! Welcome back to the place to be, cause it's me, it's me, it's Kenny DB. This week is going to be a really good week. Today, our guest is cellist Joshua Bryant. The skit today is lit and I do the renegade like a pregnant panda. What? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would- Hey! Who put that on the teleprompter? My air conditioner doesn't work. Do you mind if I come over? It's 102 degrees outside. Okay, thanks. I'll be over in like a minute. So I'm gonna grab my keys. All right. This doesn't even work. Room. It's so hot. Open. Ooh, that doesn't make sense. All right, guys, let us talk about what is relevant today. So I'm excited about this story. Everyone is talking about ESPN's The Last Dance, a breath of fresh air to keep our minds off the current state of the world. So let us bring you that nostalgia moment. The warm days and nights of late April, then May, then June, the Bulls are playing because it is NBA championship playoff season time. The sense of nervous but excited confidence that once reaching the finals, the Bulls would win it all. Everybody everywhere wants to watch the games, especially the championship series. One more game and it's all over and therefore the anticipation by all in the city of Chicago and the surrounding area that just one more game, we would be the champions. Grocery stores ready and the people are ready to stock up for this big game. The stationing of police on the south side and other areas as well in order to provide a presence in case of disruptions based on a championship game win. Then, watching a game on TV, if lucky, on a big screen model again nervous but confident then a championship game win let the celebrations begin which were exhibited by the broad smiles high fives and hugs the cheering and clapping with car horns blowing with people and flags waving as all ran up and down the streets champagne flowing cigar smokers puffing on TV and elsewhere for that matter. Speeches being given, awards being accepted. Yes, let the parties begin because once again, we are the champions. And then again, and again, then repeat. Yes, those were the days the Chicago Bulls made history in the 90s decade, earning a three-peat repeat. The Michael Jackson musical was scheduled to run this summer. We're not sure if the musical will move forward with the pandemic shutting down the theaters and all we can do is wait and see. Until then, here's a story for you guys. Mostly all of us are familiar with the hit song Scream, collaborated by Michael Jackson and his youngest sister, Janet Jackson. What many didn't know is that Scream was not the first time. Janet had actually collaborated with Michael prior to releasing her own hit album, Control. The tune crooned by many young teen girls off the Thriller album titled Pretty Young Thing. If you listen to that song, you can hear Janet singing in the background. In 1983, PYT reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. In 1994, Michael would sing background vocals on the tune Don't Stand Another Chance on Janet's album. Michael also contributed background vocals with other siblings, including Reby's hit single Centipede, arranged and wrote the track and sings on the chorus on LaToya Jackson's Nighttime Lover and sings a duet with his brother, Jermaine Jackson's Tell Me I'm Not Dreaming. One of the less mentioned but obvious sound of the King of Pop singing in the background was the top of the chart song, Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell. 
That's all for what's relevant today, but don't leave just yet because we have Joshua Bryant coming up next. What did your mother teach you about opening doors? Right. Great. What happened to my front door? We are back here with an instrumentalist for the first time in Elevate history. He is a contemporary cellist who you can see performing all across social media in different covers of some of your favorite songs. Joshua Bryant, how are you doing today? Man, I'm good, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm pretty good myself. So how long have you been playing the cello? Crazy. Um, I've been playing for 16 years, man, honestly. So I started in fifth grade. And I was actually in math class, and I'm gonna tell you the story how I got uh, started on cello. I was in math class, and this teacher came in. We was like, "Who are you? Who are you?" She was like, "Hey, I'm opening up this class." And I was like, "Okay, what what is it?" She said, "I'm opening up a music class," and we were like, "We don't want to do that. I'm like, what is that?" And you know, I grew up in Memphis. It's kind of you know a bad area, but um, she, she came in. She wanted to take this class on. And I was like, "Okay, I don't want to do it." But then she said, "You get to get out of this class, which was math class." And you know, everybody hates math. <laughs> you know, I know I do. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and I said, "Yeah, I will join. Sure, why not? Let's do it." You know. And then the next week, you know, she made us pick. It was a sheet of paper she gave us, and it had all these instruments on it. I picked viola because at the time you're small, you're puny, you don't want to lug around something big. And then, um, um, the next week. The instruments came in. My 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 viola came in. I was like, "Cool, I got a nice looking instrument." This girl had a cello. She was this small. I was I was a football player, so I was that big. That's basically how I got started. It, she asked me to switch, and I've been playing ever since. Now, usually when people choose an instrument to play, they pick a guitar, a piano, drums. I myself once played the trombone for five years. But what about the cello? Called out to you, aside of the whole switching out thing. Um, what's crazy is um. I don't know, honestly, because in my school, we didn't have band instruments like percussion or woodwinds or anything like that. We just had strings. And I wasn't really good at anything else except for things that were music because I played recorder. You know, everybody played recorder growing up. And I was good at that. So I was like, you know, I play cello. So I played cello, started getting good at that. And next thing you know, middle school came. I wasn't really good at anything like math or history or anything like that. But I like learning history, but I wasn't good at it. So the only thing I was always good at was music. So I just continued doing that. <laughs> now, is your preference to play by ear or by reading sheet music? Both. I grew up doing sheet music, but after I got acquainted with it, I started doing by ear. And I started learning like cover songs like you've seen like with Cardi B and Post Malone and stuff like that. All right, all right, all right. Don't change that dial because we're going to be back with a little bit more from Joshua Bryant. You all are entitled to some great entertainment. Be sure to like and subscribe to see future shows. And please, click that notification button. All right, Elevators, we're back here with Joshua Bryant. Now let's talk a little bit more about your career. You get possibly over 10,000 views when you do a cover of a song. How did you react the first time you saw so many people show appreciation for your work? Um, I think the first video that I had that actually kind of went viral for me was the Billie Eilish uh, Bad Guy. Uh, I think that one almost touched 200,000 views. 
And that's when I, like, things really started flowing in. Like, I started getting a lot of calls. I did a show in Centennial Park in Nashville, Tennessee, which is, like, has, like, a little Rome kind of building looking thing in it. It's a really, really big uh, venue. And, um, got into some casting calls for movies and stuff. So, after that, you know, everything kind of took off a little bit. Inspiration is the best gift to give. What is the message you want to relay to those out there watching right now? Um, regardless of anything that you do, which is writing a poem or writing a bike or anything that you feel like that's important to you, I feel like you should do it, whatever makes you happy or makes you feel at peace, you know, cause, um, that's all that matters at the end of the day, what makes you happy, not what makes anybody else happy. You know, I don't, you don't want to tend to somebody else's needs or want you want to tend to your own, you know? So it's more or less of finding that product that you feel like will grasp your attention and then flowing with it. You know, so because, you know, growing up, you get picked on, obviously. People didn't like that I played cello, you know, of course, because I was a football playing cellist. And nobody was like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you doing that, bro? <laughs> Basically. And then, you know, I just kept going with it. And then people started going, wow, you're really good at it. You know, keep going. And next thing you know, um, there's this, a friend of mine named Nathan Davis Jr. He played in the movie Detroit. He played Aubrey in that, you know, and me and him went to high school together. So I remember him used to saying, bro, you play cello? I was like, yeah, I play cello. Because, you know, he used to sing, dance, all that stuff. Um, but it's just more or less of just finding what makes you happy, honestly. You know, and just keep yeah. on rocking with it. Keep on going no matter what anybody says. I feel like we're un unique. We're not like everybody else. We're our own people. I actually go to schools now and reach out to different kids and play for them to give them that idea of, oh, that's a weird instrument. Why are you doing that? But it sounds good. Let me try what you're doing. I want to give you that opportunity in your mind to go hey i can play that instrument regardless of anybody say but i feel like if it's like uh because you know in memphis people expect you to be an athlete or a rapper that's just a typical yeah. thing but you know if you want to be a musician or a doctor i feel like you should do that you know so for kids i feel like you should play whatever your heart desires if you want to play the harp hey go play it <laughs> you know don't let anybody judge you all right thank you so much joshua for being a guest here on the show we really appreciate your talent and what you're doing to give back to the world. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Please be sure to look for Joshua Bryant on Instagram at Bryant underscore duh underscore cellist to see his videos and covers. We'll be right back with more fun with the game of the day. Double. Game time, game time, it, 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 it's game time. Now, last week's answer was friends. For our first time viewers, this is the segment of the show where I'll give you a question and you must answer within the day to receive a prize from us to you. In order to win, you must comment the correct answer by tonight, as well as like this episode and subscribe because your name will be mentioned during our next episode and you don't want to miss it. The question is, what WWE professional wrestler had a signature move called the Tombstone Power Drive? Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to win a prize. Well guys, that is all for today. I wanna thank everyone involved from our creators to our writers and today's guest, Joshua Bryant. You know the drill. Invite your family and friends and let them all know Elevate has good news whenever you're down and crazy updates that'll shake the ground. We have games, interviews, and a lot more fun. There's a little more fun. There's a little bit of something here for everyone. Remember this line, we don't hate. We're here on this channel so that we can elevate. Though this is farewell, until next time, keep up that smile and let the sun shine out. Let the sun shine in, the sun shine in, hallelujah.